हेलो बच्चों वेलकम बैक इन यू फेवरेट यूट्यूब चैनल लर्निंग साइंस विद सी के बच्चो टिल नाउ वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड द फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड चैप्टर एंड ऑलरेडी आई हैव स्टार्टेड द थर्ड चैप्टर दैट इज फाइबर टू फैब्रिक्स हियर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द एनिमल फाइबर्स टू टाइप्स ऑफ एनिमल फाइबर्स विच वी आर गेटिंग फ्रॉम द एनिमल्स एंड दे आर फर्स्ट इज वूल एंड सेकेंड इज वॉट सेल्क ओके सो In this chapter, we have studied that how from which sources we are getting this uh, wool and from where we are getting the silk. And in the first part of the video, uh, I have discussed about the wool and the sources from where we are getting the wool. And the sources we have studied are the various animals, for example, sheep, then angora goat, goat, camel, yak, llama, alpaca. Okay. then uh, we have studied that how we are processing the fibers to wool here we have studied that how rearing and breeding of sheep is done then we get to know about the processing of fibers into wool and here we have studied step by step that how a wool fiber is processed to wool okay. about the various processes shearing then uh, scoring sorting then uh, removal of small fluffy fibers then uh, dyeing and last is what it is we uh, weaving okay rolling then weaving these things we have studied in this chapter and we have also also discussed about the occupational hazard that is uh, uh, bacteria anthrax which causes uh, occupational disease that is uh, because of this uh, bacteria that is anthrax okay and uh, this is also fatal that we get to know in the now in this part of the video we will discuss about the silk and the uh, silk moth that is the insect from where we are getting this silk okay and uh, first of all we will get to know about the silk that what is silk which type of fiber it is and uh, then we will discuss about the silk moth and uh, the life cycle of this silk moth okay that uh, how from the say how silk worm forming uh, cocoons and then cocoon is used to make silk fibers okay and uh, we will also discuss about the various activities in this chapter in this part and uh, also we will get to know about how silk is uh, discovery of how silk discovery happened discovered how silk discovered okay and lastly we will discuss about the keywords of this chapter and summary okay so be with me and i am going to help you to learn your lesson very best way okay come to the chapter so okay bachcho till now we have st uh, studied uh, up to uh, the process of uh, how to prepare how to process fiber to into wool now we are going to study silk okay what is silk silks are what a type of fiber silks is a type of fiber and which type of fiber it's a animal fiber okay silk worm spin the silk fibers and uh, this silk fiber is spin by whom silk worm okay silk worm is in uh, larva larva insect larva okay here you can see the silk worm this is silk worm and it's a larva of silk moth okay it is adult silk moth the one is male another one is female okay and this is silk moth silk worm okay so this silk worm only produces silk fiber in the form of cocoon now they are rearing the rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called sericulture so very important term here is sericulture and what is sericulture sericulture is the rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called sericulture okay now uh your mother and grandmother the kind of silk sari they have this the kind of silk okay what is this here is that uh, the, this silk is used for
for producing what the silk is used to produce sarees okay especially varieties of sarees are being made using this silk fibers okay so uh, it shows that it's a very important insect silk moth okay so now we are going to learn about the life cycle of this silk worm here we will study that how male and female uh, silk worms uh, come uh, female give eggs where in the mulberry leaves and that uh, convert into silk worm and uh, again silk worm makes cocoon and cocoon uh, after development insect up inside it develops and forms a adult moth okay so this is the, about the life cycle we are going to study here so the female silk moth lays egg okay as this is common female only gives birth okay so female gives eggs female lay eggs uh, from which hatch larva okay normally what happens female silk moth lays eggs and from these eggs larva hatches okay they which are called caterpillar or silk worms and these larva are called silk worm or caterpillar okay now they grow in size and when the caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its life history is called pupa okay another stage of development after uh, larval stage is pupa okay so larva develops larva grows in size and when the caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of the life history and that is called pupa so you can see here pupa if it is the given then pupa is not given here but uh, pupa is the next stage okay i am showing you the pupal stage okay in this figure see here so but you, you can see in this picture the larva okay they are eating mulberry leaves okay now see the other pictures also this is a adult silk moth okay and this is a variety a species a special variety that is its name is bombex mandarina now you can see this is cocoon okay all you see properly here it is a uh, egg okay this is egg egg of silk moth here the, these two are the male and female silk moth and this is pupa okay this picture the in the jar what you see is the pupal stage of silk moth so again come to the chapter so i have shown you the pupa larva adult male and female silk moth okay now what happens pupa after it 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 first weaves a net to hold itself so after conversion in pupa stage what this pupa's uh, pupal larva uh, pupa does this pupa uh, first of all weaves a net okay this pupa weaves a net to hold itself okay to make itself fix somewhere then it swings okay it swings what it swings it swings its head okay from side two side in the form of the figure of h okay in the form of h okay 
uh, it's uh, spinning its head okay during these movements of the head the caterpillar secretes fiber and that is made up of what protein so the uh, whatever is produced it's uh, secreted by this caterpillar is made what it's a fiber okay and this fiber is made up of protein which hardens on exposure to air and becomes silk fiber okay and this only is converted into silk fiber okay soon the caterpillar completely covers itself by silk fibers and turns into pupa okay uh, what happens uh, are spinning for a long times making so much of fibers and one stage comes that this uh, pupa cover itself completely okay and this complete covering is called cocoon i have shown you the picture of cocoon okay again i am showing you the picture of cocoon here is the picture of this is cocoon okay whatever you are watching this is cocoon okay now cocoon is formed the further development of the pupa into moth continue inside the cocoon okay further development what happens after the development of cocoon the pupa grows itself inside the cocoon okay and uh, one stage comes that this uh, pupa convert into adult okay so silk fibers are used for weaving silk cloth okay and this silk cloth uh, silk fiber come from came from where this came from the cocoon okay cocoon is used to produce silk fibers can you imagine that the soft silk yarn is as strong as a comparable thread of steel so the thread of uh, the this silk is so strong you just think that it is compared with the same thickness thread of steel so you can imagine that how much is it's uh, strong now the silk yarn thread is obtained from the cocoon of the silk moth okay now what happens the silk yarn is obtained from where as i told you it is obtained from cocoon okay there is a variety of silk moth okay as i have shown you two varieties bombex mori and one another one variety shown. what i have shown you was uh, bombex mori and this one is bombex mandarina but you look it uh, very closely and see the shape and structure of this bombex mandarina okay so there are varieties of uh, silk moth and they produce different types of silk okay for example uh, they are in different in texture for uh, textures are what coarse smooth and shiny okay there may be that some side fibers are coarse some are smooth and some are shiny more shiny and uh, some examples are tasser silk moonga silk and kosa silk okay and these silks are produced from obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths okay the most common silk the most common silk moth is the mulberry silk okay as in our country the most common silk worm silk moth which is found is mulberry silk silk moth the silk fibers from the cocoons of uh, this moth is soft okay very soft and lustrous lustrous shining it has shining and elastic elastic means it it's uh, flexible okay 
and can be dyed in beautiful colors okay and this can be given varieties of colors also so sericulture or culture of silkworm is a very old occupation in india okay so the yielding the rearing of uh, silk moth is called sericulture okay india produces plenty of silk on a commercial scale okay in our uh, neighbor states also jharkhand in assam in west bengal some regions of bihar they are producing so much of silk okay now there is a activity and what is the uh, activity they collect pieces of silk cloth of various types okay and paste them in your scrapbook okay i have some uh, collection of this uh, various types of silk clothes i am showing you okay here is the collection for example mulberry silk it is very shining and lustrous okay and elastic then tasar sari tasar silk is used to make tasar sari okay you can see there are the, the texture of these sarees then other varieties of silk are eri shawl eri shawl are we use made using eri silk okay then moonga silk see this is a cloth made of moonga silk okay come to the chapter now there is some important point here that in india women are significantly involved in various kinds of industries related to silk production yes this is right but show that mainly women are involved in this field and for silk production these are what are the processes rearing of silk worms reeling of silk from cocoons okay the fiber what is where is produced from the cocoon that is reeled and that is called reeling of silk okay and processing of raw silk into fabric okay making various types of fabrics by their enterprise they contribute to our national economy okay as they are uh, working for production for in production of silk clothes so they are involved they are contributing to our national economy and it increases our national economy bachcho china leads the world in silk production okay as uh, china is uh, in the top rank and india has also a good position among silk producing countries okay now as we have seen the various types of silk activity 3.6 says take an artificial synthetic silk thread and a pure silk thread okay just you take artificial nowadays artificial silks are also made and uh, pure silks are already there okay now we have the varieties of uh, po polymers which are used to make silk also okay silk thread but they are different and this uh, pure silk thread is very different burn these threads carefully did you notice any difference in the smell while burning yes you will definitely uh find the difference okay the uh, what happens that the silk thread that is the original on burning it shows a uh, smell like uh, as you will uh, burn what as you burn a uh, as uh, your hair okay same like of color you will get but burning of the uh, artificial silk you will Uh, notice it's a burn like plastic okay so there is a difference in both of them and now burn a woolen fiber okay there is a one more point that uh, when you are burning this uh, silk thread first is artificial next is pure and third is woolen fiber okay when you are burning these did it smell like burning of artificial silk or that of pure silk when you burn woolen fiber it will it will smell like pure silk okay because woolen fibers uh, woolen fiber and pure silk both are the animal protein okay both are made of animal protein so both of them will smell same 
now photocopy cut out pictures of the stages of the life history of silk moth and paste them on pieces of cardboard or chart paper okay you can do it okay you have the pictures here the male silk moth female silk moth and their egg here then uh, silk worm then cocoon and last cocoon with developing moth so you can make a circular diagram where you can fix male female moth then uh, their uh, egg okay after egg comes the silk worm and after silk worm will come cocoon and after cocoon cocoon with developing moth okay and again this cycle we go back to the uh, adult silk moth okay so in this way you can make a flow cycle okay of the uh, life is life cycle of that will be called life cycle of silk moth next from cocoon to silk now we will get to understand that how cocoons are converted to silk fibers okay so obtaining silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads okay so if you want to get silk fibers you have to what you have to do you have to rear the silk moth okay and they will make cocoons and cocoon will be used to make silk threads so rearing silk worms so what is rearing silk worm a female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time okay as you know that female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time then the eggs are stored carefully on strips of cloth or paper and sold to silkworm farmers okay so these eggs are used by uh, silkworm farmers this is being sold to silkworm farmers and they are growing them in their farm so the farmers keep eggs under hygienic conditions so hygiene is very important okay whenever you are rearing silk moth hygiene has to be maintained okay so they will hatch at a suitable condition temperature and humidity okay these eggs after a, under suitable condition of temperature and humidity they will hatch okay the eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch from eggs okay after hatching you will get larva like this okay as you have seen the in the picture larva here is the larva this type of larva will be uh, produced from these ha hatch from these eggs okay this is done when mulberry trees bear a fresh crop of leaves okay Where, and the suitable time to grow these uh, larva is when the mulberry trees bear fresh crop fresh leaves okay so the larva called caterpillar or silk worms eat day and night okay these caterpillar when they hatch from the egg they continuously eats they continuously eats the mulberry leaves okay day and night and increase enormously in size okay and they continuously eating day and night and their size increases then what happens the larva are kept in clean bamboo tray along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves okay a special type of trays are being made or that is a bamboo tray that is used where the mulberry leaves are kept in numerous amount fresh mulberry leaves and these larvae are kept there okay and these larvae is continuously eating those mulberry leaves and increases in their size so after eating continuously for 15 to 30 days these caterpillars stop eating okay after eating 25 to 30 days continuously day and night they stops completely eating and then moves to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin cocoon okay when they stop eating they climb somewhere in the corner area of the um, bamboo tray and find some area where they can spin their cocoon okay small racks of twigs may be provided in the tray to which cocoons get attached okay 
so uh, normally farmers are providing small racks okay for this making uh, to help the larvae to make pupa to make cocoons okay they are providing small racks the caterpillar or silkworm spin the cocoon inside which develops the silk moth okay then what happens they continuously after getting a, a rack area small corner area they continuously spin and make fibers and make uh, completely cover themselves that is they made cocoon okay and inside the cocoon con development then takes place and the larva pupa after larva it goes to pupa stage and pupa stage converted into adult silk moth okay so now we have we should know how silk more silk is processed okay so a pipe of cocoon is used for obtaining silk fibers okay a pile of cocoons plenty of cocoons are being collected by the farmers and that is being used for producing silk fibers okay the cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam okay what uh, so one uh, thing is done here is that after the collection of the cocoons they are kept under the sun or being boiled or being exposed to steam so that the insect will be killed inside okay and co we can get the fibers for so silk fibers okay one one precaution is to be taken that if the insects break the cocoon then the thread will be of not of a good quality okay so before the insect converting into the uh, adult before that this is being kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam to kill the insect the silk fibers separate out okay after this process silk automatically silk fibers produced out okay in the steam the process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk okay so re what is reeling of silk reeling of silk is the process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk reeling is done in special machines which unwind the threads or fiber of silk from the cocoon okay nowadays as you know that various types of machines are available for unwinding of these uh, threads or fibers okay of silk from the cocoon so silk fibers are then spun into silk threads okay after getting the silk fiber they are spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth by weavers okay these silk threads are used by the weaver woven into silk cloth by weavers okay weavers using these silk threads to woven into silk cloth okay so this is about the uh, this chapter one thing we left here is discovery of silk that how silk was discovered there is a small story behind this the story is that the exact time of discovery of silk is perhaps unknown according to an old chinese legend the empress si lung chi chai was asked by the emperor huang ti to find the cause of the damaged leaves of mulberry tree growing in their garden okay there was an emperor who told his empress si lung chi to uh, look after that how these mulberry leaves of their garden is being damaged okay the empress found white worms eating up mulberry leaves so that uh, empress go, went to the garden and she found that there are white worms there are white worms in the mulberry trees which are eating up mulberry leaves okay and she also noticed that they were spinning shiny cocoons around them okay she also noticed that they are uh, spinning shiny cocoons okay shiny cocoons and being attracted accidentally what happened a cocoon dropped into her cup of tea and a tangle of delicate thread separated from the cocoon okay what happened that accidentally one cocoon dropped in the cup of tea 
and a tangle of delicate thread separate as the tea is very hot so uh, from uh, that's why a thread separated out from the cocoon and that is being noticed by the empress okay and she get to know that this can be used to make clothes silk industry began in china and was kept a closely guarded secret closely guarded secret for hundreds of years as chinese people are very uh, intelligent they kept it a secret that how they are getting this silk okay so for a long time for hundreds of years they get benefited they get benefited and they have no told to the world about it okay they only produced plenty of uh, silk and sold to other countries but didn't tell told them that how they are getting these okay later on traders and travelers introduced silk to other countries okay these uh, silk uh, clothes are being taken by the travelers and the traders to the other part of the countries and that route they traveled is still called silk road so you can find this silk road in the china china okay and uh, it's a very famous and uh, that is route is being used by the travelers and transporters traders that time for the uh, transportation of silk okay so that's uh, is called silk silk route okay there are some keywords i think that we should discuss today and uh, very important these words are very important so one by one we will get to know about all the all those already we have studied all these words but once again we are, i am going to repeat them okay so first keyword is cocoon so what is cocoon cocoon is a complete silk fiber covering of pupa stage of silk moth is called cocoon so it is what it is a complete silk fiber covering of pupa stage of silk moth okay these cocoons are used to produce silk fiber by us right? as we know that this is used to produce silk fibers now scoring as you have studied in the wool scoring during the processing of wool scoring is out the sheared skin with hair is thoroughly washed in tang to remove grease dust and dirt and this is called scoring so cleaning process washing process of um, sheared skin with hair is called scoring okay now silk moth we have studied and we know now better that what is silk moth it's a insect produces silk fibers okay it is insect produce silk fiber and that is used to make various types of textiles now fleece fleece as we know fleece is what that is the hair of sheep or yak that is used to produce silk wool hair of sheep or yak used to produce wool is called fleece now sericulture as we have studied uh, recently few minutes ago sericulture is what the rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called sericulture okay what is this the rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called sericulture now silk worm what is silk worm silk worm is the larva the larva of silk moth is called silk worm reeling reeling is what the process of taking out threads from the cocoon okay the threads threads is there in the cocoons so process of taking out threads from the cocoon for use as silk is called reeling the silk now next shearing shearing we have studied shearing is what the fleece of the sheep along with the thin layer of skin is removed from its body okay what is this the fleece of the sheep along with a thin layer of skin is removed from its body and this is called this process is called shearing now shorting shorting is what shorting is separation of different textures of hair in factory to make different varieties of wool is called shorting okay shorting is what it is the separation of different texture of hair in factory okay to make different varieties of wool is called shorting okay so this is about the keywords and now today 
we have completed this chapter okay and uh, let's summarize the chapter silk silk come from silk worms okay silk is produced from silk worms and wool is obtained from sheep goat and yak okay and other animals okay for example llama and alpaca hence silk and wool are animal fibers okay the hairs of camel llama and alpaca are also processed to yield wools but the major producer are silk sheep goat and yak in india mostly sheep are reared for getting wool okay and in india as i told you sheep is the main animal that is reared to get wool sheep here is sheared off from the body okay and uh, what it is done scoring is done scored sorted then dried then dyed and then spun and woven to yield wool okay this is the steps by step by step we get to woven to yield to wool next silk worms are caterpillars silk worms are what they are caterpillars of silk moth okay next during their life cycle the worms spin cocoons of silk fibers okay during their life cycle what worms are doing they are spinning cocoons of silk fibers next silk fibers are made of a protein okay silk fibers as we know that it is a made of protein next silk fibers from cocoons are separated out and reeled into silk threads okay silk fibers from cocoons are separated out and reeled into silk threads next weavers weave silk thread into silk clothes okay so silk threads are used to make silk clothes by weavers okay so this is all about the uh this chapter fiber to fabrics we have covered we have studied various things about here that how we are getting the animal uh, fibers for example wool and silk first of all we have studied about the wool and we get to know the sources from where we are getting wool we studied about the sheep we studied about the other animals for example angura goat kashmiri goat camel yak llama alpaca okay they all are the sources of wool then we have studied that uh, how rearing and breeding of sheep is done in our country then we get to know how fibers are processed into wool okay then also we have studied about the varieties of breeds of which whom sheep breeds okay we have studied about the sheep breeds various types of sheep breeds for example lohi rampur bushair nali bakadwal marwari patanwali okay and their quality and the state where we get them then we have studied the process all the steps scoring first of all shearing then scoring then sorting okay then uh, you know what then they then uh, this is uh, we have studied about the removal of fluffy fibers then dyeing then finally they are used to make wool and clothes okay then we have also get to know about the occupational hazard that is the bacteria anthrax which is affecting the people are doing job in this area okay then we have we studied about today we have studied about the silk that silk is also a animal fiber that is being used to make various types of textiles we also studied about the life history of silk moth okay we studied that how cocoons are used to produce silk by studying the various stages of silk moth okay this is all about this chapter in the next video i will discuss the question answer of this chapter okay so bachcho i hope that you enjoy you all have enjoyed studying with me so please be with me i will help you in this lockdown period for studying okay and uh, i request you to watch this video 3 to 5 times again and again okay
and if you have any question just ask me just drop your comments i will uh, uh, look after it okay and i will try to answer your questions in the next video so thank you bachcho thanks for watching milta hu next video mein question answer ke sath okay tab tak ke liye bye bye okay bachcho but uh, one thing i want to tell you that if any of you are new to my channel please subscribe to my channel so so that you will get updated time to time about the new videos that, that is being uploaded in my uh, channel so thank you once again bye bye